So my talk is going to be about digitalization of olfaction. So let's first of all agree on what digitalization means. Digit digitalization or digitization, as some people may call it, is a process of meeting data in a computer readable format. It will allow you to do data recording, data archiving, data analysis, and more importantly, data modeling, as we will see in a couple of minutes. And once we develop models, this will trigger forecasting and prediction as we will actually see. So um, let's look at, a, at an example of what uh, uh, data recording, data archiving, and model, model development means. If we look at weather forecast, and we can look at uh, living comfort, we can agree that living comfort uh, is a combination of temperature and humidity. And, uh, and uh, we've been storing for ages information about uh, temperatures at different locations, at different times of the year, different days of the year, different time of the day, different atmospheric pressure, and also um, uh, in different wind conditions. And some models have been developed over time, essentially linking these different parameters together. So from a very uh, uh, analytical way of capturing data, we could also develop a more hedonic characteristics of living comfort. For instance, we can uh, define what the comfortable situation is, or just freezing situation is, by just looking at uh, defining, uh, by just looking at temperature and humidity. Data, it also triggers data comparison. For instance, I can compare the living comfort in a city like Paris versus a city like New York. Moreover, you know, we can also uh, uh, develop forecasting capability, including hedonic characteristics, such as, you know, what is a good time of the year to visit New York? And I don't want to be in a miserable condition. So for, for instance, September would be a good time to do this, right? So as we start capturing data, actual data and develop hedonic characteristics on this data, we can not only associate hedonic, hedonic characteristics to data, but also with a model that we have developed uh, um, uh, forecast uh, weather conditions, forecast living comfort conditions, and essentially trigger uh, questions like, give me a time of, to visit New York in a good condition. But once you have this and you have actually developed your model, you can also infer data from your model. For instance, if we look at uh, given, given uh, weather conditions in a city like New York, and you happen to be in the city, but above the city, right? So let's look at a plane uh, consideration at that point. Um, you can actually uh, adjust your altimeter based on the atmospheric pressure that you know would exist at ground level and actually uh, uh, measure your atmospheric pressure in the plane and readjust your altitude. And this is, of course, extremely useful when it comes to uh, landing a plane in the New York City area. So by having a model for weather forecast together with uh, 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 enriched data, you can infer information such as an altitude at a given location. But this will also um, allow you to develop this will also allow you to develop long trend analysis. For instance, if you were to record information over time, one may uh, realize that the average annual temperature in a city like New York has been increasing over time, right? And this long trend analysis can be performed because you have data archiving, data recording, and data analysis. And you have also developed specific models. So now you can fine tune your model with new parameters such as CO2 concentration level. And we know that there is a strong correlation between CO2 concentration level and, and temperature. So if we agree that forecasting would be uh, uh, providing information on normal conditions, we could also trigger prediction, which in that case will be forecasting into, let's say, abnormal condition. For instance, an example of forecasting would be what would be the temperature next year in New York? Or even advanced forecasting, do I have enough time ahead of me to go for a run before it rains? Prediction, uh, conversely, would be more, what will be the temperature conditions in New York in 2050, considering that CO2 level may increase by 10, 20, or 30%, right? 
So once we have developed a model, model and you have enriched your model, you can come up with uh, a, a very interesting features such as, again, forecasting, advanced forecasting and prediction. So, so let, let's look at what it means for olfaction. Uh, um, in the case of olfaction, we can um, consider that uh, uh, olfaction is um, complex at best or complicated at best. Let me illustrate actually my point. Um, human panels uh, 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 are complex, if you allow me to, to, say, to say so, right? They provide you insight on an olfaction, but it's very difficult to, to establish a clear relationship between cause and effect. Right. While conversely, if you were to look at GC, GC would be more complicated. Right, they allow you to analyze the constituent of a smell. However, it's difficult to uh, derive what the actual smell is looking at the GC. Right. So, is digital olfaction a way, a path from you know chaotic to simplicity? Right, where the cause, the relationship between cause and effect will become you know, simpler or more evident. As we have done, actually, as we have seen, uh, the benefit of digitization being about data recording and data archiving, it allows you also to develop a model, right? So what do we mean by developing a model on olfaction? So odorants, as we know, activate uh, our olfactory receptors. And uh, as we, uh, <coughs> as we um, develop a model, a model essentially would be uh, assigning uh, and recording uh, 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 olfactive signatures and assigning to these olfactive signatures some odor percepts, right? It's a little bit like building a map, essentially. And you would be building a map from very simple uh, landmarks at first using uh, uh, simple odorants, for instance, known chemical molecules. And you would assign actually odor percepts. So this concept of building a map, although it may seem a little bit fuzzy at first, as you start to populate your uh, map with some specific landmarks or beacons, you start to make actually a map richer and richer. It may sound long and tedious a process, of course, but there is no real shortage of chemical molecules for now. And you can actually imagine processing hundreds, even thousands of molecules and then recording their specific signature, having a specific landmark for each of these signatures and start to populate and enrich your map, right? And as you start to blend with additional information, uh, like chemical ontology or like you know, olfactory compendiums, you can start to have actually landmarks that will help you provide uh, enrich information in your maps. So the shape of the country, the shape of a continent uh, and the shape also of potential rivers and mountains and, and seas like, will start to take place. And you could see you know, this continuity from one country to another. You could start to see also a, a continuity uh, conversely, uh, in between chemical, chemical uh, families, uh, maybe. Okay. So what would require to develop digital reflection? very similar to what you see in the weather forecasting model. You need a way to record information. So let's call such a device an olfactory GPS, for instance, that would be able to collect a smell and record a smell. It has to be, of course, repeatable. It will have to be reproducible. But you know, if you assume that you have such a device, you can record, uh, record archive, and easily communicate uh, an olfactory signature. You can anticipate also that you will need environmental sensors, such as temperature and humidity, for instance. We know that both these parameters, temperature and humidity, have an influence on the specific olfaction, right? So you will need to capture also the, uh, to build your model, you will need to capture also uh, environmental conditions. You need also to be very consistent. So some protocols will be required. You need to be consistent in the way you capture smell, right? If I take the example of a weather forecast, of course, you know, the thermometer has to be exposed to the external air as opposed to be, you know, held in my hand, right? So the consistent measurement is important. 
Uh, you will need standards, you know, in that particular case, in the case of, you know, um, a, a weather forecast, it's about units, right? But you will need some agreed upon methodology to quantify and qualify the measurement. So some units would be required. And to enrich your model, having additional data sources, uh, I mentioned before chemical ontologies, I mentioned olfactory compendiums, Chemical uh, uh, enriched additional data would make your uh, your maps would make your model you know, richer with more content, right? So this is essentially what would be required for digital reflection. So digital reflection enables the recording, the archiving, and the sharing with information, but more importantly, the unambiguous sharing of information. So let's look at some uh, 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 in, uh, application or use cases we can derive from this. As, you, as some of you may know, in uh, 2013, um, the highest court of the French judiciary ruled against a company, uh, the company L'Oréal, um, uh, for um, after they started the case for um, uh, counterfeiting one of their, uh, uh, one perfume from one of their division, Lancome, right? And, uh, and the court actually uh, ruled, ruled that a shape that can be perceived by senses can only be protected to the extent that it is identifiable with sufficient precision to be communicated, right? Identifiable precision and communication is what is really requir required. The judiciary, um, the, the court also added that written descriptions such as formula printouts or even GC results are not sufficient, right? So the really, how would you capture, uh, should you be able to record a smell, archive a smell and communicate the smell, then you could unlock new uh, possibilities when it comes to uh, copywriting a fragrance, for instance. Well, you may realize also that a snapshot of an olfaction of a fragrance may not be sufficient. Same as you will, you would have in music. Uh, in music, a song can be identified and recognized with a frame or sequence of sounds, right? Uh, this is the example of Shazam. So you could imagine also that uh, a fragrance would require some kind of a sequence of signatures or some kind of a movie, right? And this is what we can see in this example where we essentially built a movie of uh, um, um, uh, uh, one perfume called Black Opium from a counterfeit version of Black Opium. And you can see that the original genuine uh, uh, perfume has a very stable um, uh, signature as opposed to the counterfeit version, right? So this movie of the, uh, of the fragrance as you know, the head note and the body note and the tail notes unfold gives a lot about you know the fragrance itself and could be you know considered as a, as a fingerprint of the of the fragrance again triggering uh, features like copywriting a fragrance right so not that, not that this could be realized tomorrow but you could see that you know against the argument of the court uh, whether uh, you could not actually specifically identify with precision and communicate with precision what a, a, a fragrance could be well, in this example, we can see that uh, you know this uh, this sequence of snapshot and the way it unfolds uh, uh, is very specific uh, uh, to to this genuine perf perfume compared to the counterfeit version. What would this mean in the context of, of automotive, right? Um, well, we just look at what data recording could trigger as a, as a, as a feature, right? Um, but if we were looking at data or model forecasting, uh, we could actually imagine that for a given car or a given type of cars, we could have a model for a baseline, a model for malodors, and even actually have models for specific malodors. And as the conditions evolve in the car, more humidity, more temperature, uh, you could, um, uh, based on your model, you could forecast, you know, the presence of malodor, and you could detect presence of malodor and even identify the malodor with uh, a surprisingly very high uh, accuracy, right? In this example, we developed a model of malodors and you know you can see that the system can define with a 90%, 94% accuracy, the presence of a malodor versus the baseline. 
And should you make your um, um, model a little bit you know, uh, more refined, you could also identify which uh, malodor you're talking about, whether it's a body malodor, a cigarette malodor, or fried fruits, right? So typical signatures are like the, the ones you would see on the lower left part of the screen. And, you know, having a system uh, anticipate and identify, you know, level of uh, malodors and identify which malodor you're talking about is what you could base, you could see actually from this uh, uh, um, olfactory model that we could have developed. It's a significant in, in, uh, impact in the, uh, in the uh, rental fleet and ride sharing uh, uh, industry, as you can see with uh, an excess of 1 billion uh, impact on an annual basis. Let's look also at another example where as opposed to forecasting, we would be looking at prediction, right? Uh, so prediction, uh, one illustration of this would be, for instance, to capture a specific smell in a specific location. So let's take the example of a producer of vanilla in Tahiti, for instance, right? You could anticipate that this uh, producer would capture the olfactory signature of a particular, you know, uh, production of vanilla production at a given time, right? And you could, uh, to prevent falsification, you could associate with your uh, uh, data being captured, you could associate a GPS location. Indeed, this is in Tahiti. You could associate, you know, the identity of the user. Uh, and then you could even consider this, storing this into a blockchain, and you will have actually uh, uh, information which is uh, uh, captured with a lot of certainty and cannot be falsified. As you go through this, um, a model could be defined and developed using a specifically approved upon a mode of transportation. So let's say you agree that transportation from Tahiti to New York would be done uh, in a container, which is you know, uh, controlled in temperature on a boat, right? Uh, you could predict what the uh, end signature would be by applying this model, this transfer function of the signature uh, 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 through, through this uh, uh, shipping method, right? And um, so you have this prediction uh, signature in, in yellow here. And um, in parallel to this, as you get the goods in, in, in New York, uh, and, and as you record the uh, olfactory signature at time uh, of, uh, of delivery and at the location of the delivery, uh, you could also, uh, uh, you would actually be able to capture that smell and then compare it to the predicted signature. And this comparison would allow you to either control whether the source was right or if you know it went through the mode of transportation which was agreed upon, right? So you can see that um, predicting a specific olfactory signature uh, can have a benefit to help you uh, trace digitally uh, premium goods such as vanilla or you know cocoa beans or coffee beans or whatever, right? So we've seen actually an example with um, uh, the value of recording, like the uh, uh, fragrance, the value of forecasting essentially, with the example of the, of the automotive application, and here an illustration of the value of predicting the signatures, right? Again, like you have on the uh, weather forecast or, or on the weather information or on the living comfort information, you can apply thanks to digitization. You can, you know, get the benefit of data recording, data prediction, and data forecasting. So, in summary, um, uh, digitization removes the complexity and the complication from all action. Um, capturing, recording, and archiving of smells enable novel and innovative use cases such as fragrance copyrights, identification of malodors, traceability of premium goods, and more. As uh, markers of some pathologies are being identified in the individual's breath, uh, such as diabetes, cancer, and more recently, you may have seen Parkinson's disease. Uh, in, it was a, a paper in the Journal of Neuroscience a couple of weeks ago. Uh, other innovations based on digital faction uh, will appear in unforeseen industries like, uh, like healthcare. So thanks to this creativity and your creativity, developing digital olfaction on tiny, highly scalable and affordable sensors will unleash the creativity of you know, many industries to come.